Our story begins, like most stories, with a seed. This particular seed fell from its great tree on a listless afternoon in late spring. It took root within the walls of a village called Hidden Hollow, which was surrounded on all sides by stone walls and dense forest. And like all seeds of this species, commonly known as the walking wood, it first grew into a giant acorn. The first year is a vulnerable time for any newborn of the walking wood. They grow from deep within their acorns and they have no way of defending themselves. So it was dutifully guarded by one of the protectors of Hidden Hollow, a ladybug named Priscilla. She kept it clean of forest growth and fought away any creatures that might steal it for food until the following spring, a young boy emerged. The boy, like all his kind, had made his way to the outside world by eating. He'd hollowed out his acorn by ingesting it, absorbing all the nutrients and knowledge that the great tree had woven into the fibers. He'd learned to read, write, and speak all before his first birthday, and he'd grown as tall as he would ever be. And there he would reside for the rest of his time, the acorn he was born within serving as his home and spending his days attending to the needs of the great tree in the surrounding village. Or at least he would have, were his path a typical one. It's his story I wish to tell. The boy squinted into the sunshine until his eyes adjusted. He stood in the opening of his now home, shivering in the chill morning air and cataloging his surroundings with wide eyes. He marveled at the size of the great tree, the infinite blue skies above, and the busyness of morning life in Hidden Hollow. Hello, little one, Priscilla, the ladybug said, sitting on a crooked post in front of his acorn. It's nice to finally meet you. The boy knew her voice. He'd heard it through his walls many times, but he was shy and merely smiled in return. What is your name? Priscilla asked. He blinked up at her for a moment, then picked up a nearby branch and wrote his answer in the soil. Huh, Priscilla thought. Well, he's an odd one. Vegas turned out to be a curious mind and an apt student, though a terribly quiet one. He stepped into the flow of his village quickly, helping in whatever ways were needed, and never complaining or shrugging off any of his duties. He was well liked in Hidden Hollow, yet his free time was nearly always spent alone, reading, writing in his notebooks, or simply pondering. His people, kind as they may be, were people of the here and now. Their curiosities were small and easily satisfied, and their interest in the outside world was minimal. Some dabbled in trade between villages, but even that was infrequent. Vegas, on the other hand, had a genuine fondness for questions. It was an awkward pairing for someone so shy. Whenever he wandered aloud, he was typically met with confusion from his peers. Everything we need is here, they'd say. What does it matter what the rest of the world does? He had no answer, but the questions persisted regardless. So like all those whose nature is misunderstood, he quickly learned to keep his musings to himself. Unless Priscilla had time to visit. She, it turned out, enjoyed ideas as much as he did. 
Whenever she could manage it, she would bring him scraps of acorns from other villages to ingest. He would eat them carefully, his eyes glazing over, and then he'd tell her about all the information and stories they contained. She enjoyed these discussions greatly. It was the only time she'd see him so free with his words, and his enthusiasm for knowledge was infectious. On nights where sleep was difficult to come by, Vegas would sit alone atop the wall surrounding the village, not quite daring to climb over. He savored the feel of the unknown and the wildness that lent his imagination. He would speculate in his notebooks, filling pages with drawings and writings of what he imagined might be out there. And some nights, Priscilla would join him, and Vegas was always pleased when she did. They could share silence as easily as conversation, and that suited him perfectly. And for a long time, that simple routine was enough. Until, after a very particular dream, it wasn't.
Vegas spent only two more seasons in Hidden Hollow after his dream. His discontent started small, like an itch or a pinprick, but the seed was planted and nothing he did stopped it from growing. He still did not complain, but over that period, he became increasingly lost in thought. The other villagers took notice, but they inevitably shrugged and said that was just his way. They were quick to take something new and spin it into something that had always been. While sharing tea inside of his acorn, Priscilla broached the subject. You are only half here these days, Priscilla said. What's been on your mind? Vegas stared down at the tabletop, searching for where to begin with a worried expression on his face. After a long pause, Priscilla smiled and said, The general idea is fine. I've been having a lot of trouble keeping my mind in one place, Vegas admitted. Even in the middle of conversation, my thoughts just keep turning to the, to the forest. Well, you've always wondered about it, Priscilla said. Vegas shook his head. No, not like this. This is different. I'm not just curious. It feels strangely important, like there's something I'm supposed to be doing. Such as? Priscilla said, worry creeping into her voice. I don't know. That's what makes this so odd. I can have the most intense feeling that I'm not supposed to be here anymore. I just can't say why. Priscilla considered her next words very carefully. I think it's time you spoke with the great tree, she said. Vegas thought about that for the rest of the night. Two days later, he took her advice. The Great Tree was a source of rumor and speculation to those down below in Hidden Hollow. Many believed it was listening to multiple voices at once, some traveling up through the soil, while others were in the wind or the clouds. It was rarely sought for its counsel because it was so difficult to tell if you were being addressed specifically when it spoke. Its words were largely incoherent and more resembled riddles than advice. But there are many great trees in the world, and not all alike. Some were far more articulate than hidden hollows, while others never spoke at all, exclusively communicating with their villages through the fibers of the acorns. With the use of a pulley built long before Vegas was born, he rose high up into the great tree's canopy. The great tree's eyes were glossy and unfocused, like small orbs floating in pools of ancient ink, and it whispered strange phrases into the wind. Vegas couldn't make sense of them. Not exactly sure how to begin, he finally chose a direct question. What does the forest want from me? The great tree ceased whispering abruptly. Its eyes pulled into tight focus, and its gaze locked onto Vegas. There was no doubt it was speaking directly to him. You have had the dream. Vegas nodded slowly, startled by the feeling of the great tree's attention. Heavy, like being trapped under too much snow. You must pay heed. The bell will only grow louder until it is 
is all that you can hear. It took Vegas time to find his voice again. What was that dream? He finally asked. Why did I have it? You must have the dream to wake up. Vegas didn't understand, but instinctively knew better than to press for an explanation. What is the bell? He asked instead. And why can no one else hear it? Your answers are found at the end of the world. Is that a place? How do I find the end of the world? The bell is the guide. Well, how long will it take me to get there? Time is personal. Vegas slowed his breathing and thought for a moment. Will I be able to come back? He'd heard stories of other villagers leaving, but only one had ever returned, and he'd come home mute and died shortly after. Beginning and ends are the same. Vegas, feeling completely lost, finally asked, Why is this happening? But the great tree's eyes had lost focus, and it returned to its cryptic whispering. Vegas sat and listened for another couple of minutes, pining for clarity and finding none. But as the pulley was returning to the ground, he thought he heard the great tree apologize. Instead of satisfying him, Vegas' meeting with the great tree only made his discontent more apparent. And just as the great tree had warned, The bell grew louder and more insistent. Exactly one week later, Vegas decided to leave. He wasn't entirely sure what his purpose with this venture was, but he knew he needed to understand what was happening to him. He needed to learn about the dream, the bell, and now, to find the end of the world. And in a less specific way, he had to admit that he was no longer content. The thought of an entire life spent within the walls of his village, the very same idea that gave his neighbors such comfort, quietly horrified him. So it wasn't with a sense of adventure that he made his decision, but one of acceptance. His only question was how to say goodbye. He loved the people of Hidden Hollow. They were good-hearted, and their embrace of tradition and simplicity made them easy company. But because he couldn't share in it, it also kept him at arm's length. He often felt as though he were watching life through a window, outside in the elements while everyone he knew was indoors, warming themselves near some shared fire he could only observe and never experience. He'd spent a long time trying to find his way into that room, but for all his attempts to fit in, he'd never found the key. Vegas wished to explain his departure in person, but knew that words would fail him. Shyness would crawl into his throat, only permitting inadequate phrases to pass. So he decided to express himself in a letter, which he would pen to his door. And he would steal away in the middle of the night, before anyone was awake to talk him out of it.
those walls with my eyes closed Cause I have known those walls since I have known myself And what once was rest has turned to restlessness And these routines have changed from bombs to tiny hells And still I hear that bell Goodbye with thinking simple words And I am not yet sure what I am looking for So I can't say the day or time that I'll return For you, familiar was always a wanted thing But for me, it's just a gentler form of change Just what is pulling me But just cause it's hard to go Does not mean I should stay So I'm on my way On Vegas' final night in Hidden Hollow, in the midst of packing a notebook, he was startled to find Priscilla sitting on his windowsill. Were you not going to say goodbye? She asked. Vegas looked down sheepishly, but shook his head. I was coming to find you next. He'd always been able to speak to Priscilla easier than anyone else. He couldn't imagine leaving without saying farewell, face to face even though he dreaded parting. You must take your lamp, Priscilla said. The lamp in question stemmed from his ceiling. It was in the shape of a miniature acorn, and it shone with a light that never darkened. It had been there from the time he was born, constant as the sunrise. You can't survive far from the village without it, Priscilla warned. Only a few days, 
and in some parts of the forest, even less. You must always keep it with you. Vegas looked startled. I didn't know that, he said, suddenly sounding much younger. He pulled the lamp down and set it on the table. Staring into its light, he whispered, There's so much I don't know. Then it's a good thing I'm coming with you, Priscilla said. Vegas peered at her, confused. But your place is here. It's as much your home as any of ours. And the great tree... I already spoke with the great tree, Priscilla interrupted. I've been relieved of my duties. I can leave any time. Vegas stared out his window mutely. Having known him his entire life, Priscilla knew that he was searching for words, and she kindly gave him the space. Finally, he asked her simply, Why? Priscilla, with an unmistakably sad look on her face, answered him just as simply, Because you're my friend. Were it not for their size difference, Priscilla was sure he would have hugged her, Instead, he put his arm out and she crawled onto his shoulder, where she simply felt him breathe for a while. He was at a loss for words, but they were unnecessary. His gratitude was as plain as anything he could say. An hour before sunrise, Vegas finished packing and tacked his farewell letter to the front door. Then he and Priscilla silently climbed the wall surrounding Hidden Hollow, and for the first time ever, hopped to the other side. And so their journey began, together, into the woods.
sit and watch the setting sun And I'd wonder when it was gone Where was it going to visit next? All that time my eyes were pointed off Out into the distance off and down It's hard to catch my breath With this beating in my chest Oh, what's hiding in the dark? Oh, why do I feel so small? Vegas did not sleep at all during his first night in the woods. His thundering heart wouldn't allow it. But as the sun rose and the world returned to something more familiar, he quietly stepped from his shelter and climbed atop a large moss-covered stone. There he curled up on his side underneath a pillar of sunlight, and just as he was beginning to dry, succumbed to exhaustion. But despite the racking fear he'd suffered the night before, and how much more intense the unknown was already proving itself to be, he smiled, a small smile, in his sleep.